Well, hello, Warriors. Um, everybody, I asked if everybody would be interested in the chat about things technical, um, closing equipment, etc. So, what I'll try and do is I'll put um, wee videos and some pictures together and put them in a strip and see if they're, they're helpful. Um, and if there's any other questions arise from what I'm going to speak about, feel free to either message me or ask me to elaborate on something because um, I don't want to go over the top of them. First thing I'd like to speak about is the layering system. Now, the layering system um, comes in three parts normally uh, and this is we're speaking about the top half of the body. So first part, base layer. Um, never ever ever cotton because cotton can kill because it's water retention, draws the heat from your body and so on and so forth. So. Um, you can basically use merino wool if you're feeling flush. Um, there are other alternatives like bamboo and such like which are very good but still kind of expensive. The majority is will use a polyester mix. Now of late they've put a chemical into it and stop some smelling and things like that so where beforehand polyester was terrible, absolutely terrible. Um, now they're, they're, they're not so bad. Now, um, your base layer can consist of one or two garments, depending on the, the temperature, etc. Cold weather, I use um, long sleeve, a long sleeve um, t-shirt, uh, base layer, and a short sleeve on top of that. Um, mid layer, next will be something like this, a light fleece, um, depending on the weather, I might put a light fleece with something heavier on top. Um, Paramo are very good with their, their kind of a mid layers, um, but expensive again. So uh, we're now onto the, the final layer, which is the shell. Um, they kind of come in three types. So you've got the Paramo, which in my opinion is top of the range. Gore-Tex or something similar, so it's a, it's a laminated material. Um, can be event, high vent. There's a few of them in the market. But they all work in the, the um, um, micropore system, so basically they let um, moisture vapour, which is sweat, out, but they don't let water in. But they do break down after a period of time, so they're not as robust as your um, panamo jackets. Then finally, you've got the nylon coated shell, which is basically um, a polythene bag, and the only thing that's good for is going to the supermarket. I wouldn't even bother buying one. Um, the bottom half is a bit trickier. Um, trousers are always difficult to choose. Um, in my opinion, the best ones are soft shell trousers. Again, never ever cotton. And another big no-no is jeans. Just don't even think, consider jeans. I'm sure you all know that anyway. So you can have um, your soft shell. You carry waterproof uh, trousers over trousers or like some of the girls like to wear, you can put on leggings and in fact some guys now are wearing leggings with over trousers over the top and that's the way they spend the whole day. But it's very a very expensive way to go through um, your kind of a hill walking career. The reason being that these um, uh, waterproof trousers, they're, they're not robust. They, they don't last any length of time. So your backside will, you know, will start wearing out and between your legs will chafe. So, you know, it's, it's, it's again, it doesn't a personal choice. You've just got to be careful with the temperature control, stuff like that, keeping yourself dry, because as soon as you get wet, that's it, it's game over, you'll become really cold, and you, you know, you'll never retain any heat. So, keep yourself dry is the most important thing. Now, I could elaborate an awful lot more, but I'm not going to. Um, the other things that's important is gloves, very important. Now, in winter, I carry three sets. Summertime, probably two. Um, I have a, a set of really heavy gloves um, that are fantastic for winter climbing, skiing, etc. But no, probably hello, I'm just a wee bit too warm for that. So what I do is I carry a lightweight pair of gloves, which I wear, unless it gets too cold, or if I get them wet. If I get them wet, I put them inside, inside my, my fleece or something like that, and the heat dries them out. So you're, you're pretty much sorted with that. Um, so that's the kind of a layering system, top and bottom. Um, extremities, we spoke about the gloves. Um, hat, 
Again, personal choice, whether it's a baseball cap, really hat, whatever. Um, but I always make sure I take a buff with me because that can double up in your heart. It seals your neck to prevent thermal loss. And um, the, the, the only other thing that I would think about is your socks. Um, I only wear one pair, two pair, I don't think it's um, useful. I think it causes blistering. Um, so things like Smarts Wool or um, Bridgedale socks. So you're looking for a high percentage of merino wool, um, not nylon, not cotton, again, self-explanatory. Because um, they dry off quicker, you want to prevent sweat, you want to and another thing is you want to keep your feet dry. Um, there are seal skin socks, but far, far too warm, especially for hill walking. So it then goes on to your things like your boots, etc., which are the next kind of a technical bit of kit. So have a boot here. This is a three season boot. Okay, um, the important parts you've got this wee part here which is actually a lace lock so when you tighten the bottom half of your boot up this section here then the laces go in here and lock then it allows you to put in different tension in the top half of the boot now a lot of, another thing let, let's have a look at the sole right a good cleated sole the, the the yellow disc or part here tells you it's vibram very important your heel nice square heel not rounded because on the descent they'll slip. That groove there is actually designed for different attachments. These are, as you can see, flexible, but they would take a cramp on for a wee while, but not a great deal of time. They're not designed for, they're not B1 boots, they're free season boot. However, Gore-Tex liner, so it means it's gonna keep your, you'll see here, the Gore-Tex motif on it. So your Gore-Tex membrane keeps your feet dry um, and allows vapour out so the sweat shouldn't be too much an issue. Um, a lot of people say to me, what boot would you recommend? I would not recommend any kind of boot, any type. I mean these are Salua and the reason I buy them is the last fits me, it's the right width fitting for me. Now, a lot of people swear by Scarpas, Scarpas are no use to me, um, they're too narrow. So you really need to get your boots fitted, and in my opinion, Tyson is about as good as you're, good as you're going to get. Um, some of the other places are, are not so great, so Tyson is your one. Anyway, um, that's the clothing, booting, etc. Kind of uh, almost finished. The only other thing I'd like to add about hats is this is um, a mountain cap. So as you can see, it's made below alpine. Um, they disappeared for a while, now they're back in. Waterproof, fleece on the inside, very warm. Don't look very good, I'm afraid, but they are very, very good, um, especially in wet weather. So, quite recommend that. Anyway, I'll, um, I'll stop here. Um, I'll take some stills of bits and pieces of gear, and then I'll go through that on another video. Okay, um, stay tuned for part two and maybe part three. So, okay, thanks for watching and we'll speak to you very soon. Cheers just now. Okay, folks, here we go with part two. Um, the next thing I'd like to speak about and uh, the kind of a thing that I'm, I'm, I've been asked about a few times is rucksacks. Uh, rucksacks come in all different shapes and sizes. Now I'm going to put up three stills and they're from a thing that's um, small enough to, to take up to somewhere like David Woods or whatever the case may be or even maybe even up to Saddle Hill in the summer. So you can get a set of waterproofs in it and a water bottle and that's it and maybe a bar or two but, and, and that's your lot. It's actually designed um, for what they call OM running. OM, O-M-M, -M, was the original mountain marathon. So it's really designed for trail running, but it can get you by for um, a very short, kind of a couple of hours walk or something like that. Um, the next one up is a Salua rucksack, which is designed for 
summer hill walking. It's about 35 litres plus. Now the plus means that you can add bits on, they've got wee pockets on the side and things like that. And when buying a rucksack, think about how you're going to pack it and how you're going to extract the stuff that you need quickly. Now the Salua bag has got a zip near the bottom so you can keep your waterproofs in there. It means that you don't have to open your um, your whole rucksack up out and dig a boot inside it. You know exactly where your waterproofs are so you can get them in a hurry. The other bits are not so important, but that one in particular is because that's what you need to really get to quick. Um, the next one, the, the kind of uh, the more technical one you'll see written in it is Gribble Mont Blanc. Now that's um, a full Alpine uh, mountaineering bag. It's slightly larger, maybe about 40 litres or something like that. It's designed to take two ice axes, it's designed to take a set of skis, it's designed to take crampons and other bits and pieces you would need for a full-blown alpine day. Um, the only time we'd use that in this country is probably in winter, in winter mountaineering, although I have I use it in summertime too if I'm taking groups out and I need a bit more space. Um, because I can, I can. It's a more versatile rucksack. Now, they come priced accordingly, as you can imagine. Now, what, what, what we put in it matters, and how we look after the, the contents matters as well. For instance, you just don't throw things in it, because there's no such thing as a waterproof rucksack. You get them with rain covers, etc. But rain will even find its way in through them. So what you've got to think of is how you pack your kit. Now, I have here, if you can see it, it's a thing called a dry bag. So, if I put some air inside it and roll it up, right, it goes like a balloon. Right. If it's airtight, it's going to be watertight. So, these are, these are, these are recommended. And if you watch what you're doing, you can sometimes pick them up relatively cheaply. Other than that, a thing that will do it adequately is a polythene bag. Now, when I took kids out in the, the Duke of Edinburgh, I, I recommended that they got themselves bin liners. It's like, I think it was two or three pounds for nine or ten of them. Um, and I used to get approximately a year out of one wee uh, rubble sack. So it's, it's got to be the rubble sack, you know, the, the, the heavy duty polythene ones. The only black bags, they, they tear, they're, they're no use. So it's got to be a rubble sack if you're going to go down the, the, the cheap, cheaper kind of a road. Um, inside the, um, the dry bags, one, th one of the things I always take with me, no matter what time of year it is, is one of these fellas. Oh, it's going to come out back to the front. Now, this is... It's, it's, it's a four-man shelter. So basically, this is like a tent with no poles. The poles are the people. And it will happily um, house four people um, in any conditions. They are a godsend. They save many, many lives. So it's a big game. Um, it, it, it's, it's high on the list of mount leaders, mountaineers, whoever, hill goers. So highly recommend that. So... After this wee short video, I'm going to put up pictures of the rucksacks, um, the three rucksacks. Um, I'm also going to put up a couple of pictures of two jackets. A red jacket, which is a Rab Gore-Tex jacket, and another one that I've had for a long, long, long while. Um, it's a, a Paramo Mountain Smock. Now, I can't remember, it's over, well, well, well over 20 years that I've had that and it's still performs. Um, it's a bit heavier, that's the only downside to it. But winter mountaineering, ice climbing, the whole lot, it is a fantastic jacket. So basically what I'm saying is, if you can afford it, go down the Paramo route. Um, that's basically video number two. Um, I'll think about some of the other things. Uh, that go inside your rucksack. Uh, I'm going to speak a wee bit about poles. I'm going to speak about mini spikes, um, head torches and stuff like that. However, I think that one will do for just now. 
Um, so, yeah, we're going to have part three. <laughs> um, I hope they're not boring. These talks are not boring you too much. They are informative, and as I say, bear in mind that um, if you want to ask me anything, feel free. Just drop me a line on the Warriors page. Thanks for watching again, and um, we'll speak to you in part three. Okay, cheers just now. Bye. Hi guys, well here we are at um, part 3 and I'd like to get into some of the, the more technical things. A wee bit of advice on one thing I forgot to mention, the waterproof trousers. Now, a top tip is to get yourself a pair of clip-on braces, they're amazing. Now, I use them in both my soft shell trousers but more importantly on your, um, on your over trousers. Because when you're starting to move, your over trousers are slidey, so they slip down a wee bit more, and you end up with a crutch sneaking down and sneaking down. And then when you've got to take a big step, you're inhibited. So um, they're, they're, they're a top tip, they really are. It's good if you can get the type with the plastic clips in them, but they're not so easy to get now. So if it's the metal ones, it's fine. It's, um, it's just a wee bit colder at the touch. However, top tip. So, moving on, um, some of the things that I carry in my rucksack, and no everybody would carry the full amount here, but I do when I'm taking a group out. Always have a head torch there. Head, head torch is a great way of signaling people if you get benighted, if it gets light, etc. Um, your, your beam will carry for miles, but get a good one. Um, if you're going to invest in it, get a good one. Um, and always carry spare batteries. It's quite easily, easy for your torch to get switched on inside your rucksack. So one of the things that I do is I take one of the batteries out and I reverse it. So if you reverse the polarity, the thing won't work. So it means that when you take it back out, you reverse it and your batteries will be okay. Also carry a wee um, personal first aid kit. Now it's it's quite small, but size of a wallet maybe, a wee bit thicker. Inside there, there's a peri whistle which again is for emergency use. Um, I normally carry, um, they're called Tom O Tickers I think, it's tick removers basically. Some uh, elastoplasts, some bits and pieces, you know, some um, kit bandage and such like, should you get a, a sprain or a strain. If I'm taking a group out, I always take my group um, first aid kit. Inside that first aid kit I've got um, Heat, a heat and cold pack. I've got a spare compass, which is an emergency bit of kit. Things like compede, triangular bandage, and the such like. Another thing that I carry for an emergency is um, a space blanket. One of these um, blankets that uh, they keep you insulated because it's it's amazing how quickly you will lose your heat. Um, and the next two remaining items that I'm going to speak about and then I'll finish off with uh, a wee chat about the thing and uh, things in general. Mini spikes. Now you've probably seen them in the other videos that I've uh, created and um, they, they are a really good uh, bit of your kit in weather like this when you've got hard packed ice, snow etc. But they are not a replacement for full blown crampons. If you're going to go into the high hills and weather like this, any time any time in winter, you must carry crampons and have the ability to use them. But then they'll be accompanied with an ice axe. And I don't think we'll go there. I don't think we're quite ready for that yet. However, mini crampons are perfect for places like Saddle Hill and such like, and anywhere where it's covered with snow and there's been a lot of traffic on it and it's hard packed or ice. They're fantastic on ice but not with any degree of slope. Now, poles. 
Polls can be controversial or oh, I don't need them, that's for old people and the rest of it. Rubbish. They are absolutely fantastic bits of kit. Not only for, <laughs> you think, supporting your weight, but they give you a full body workout. Not only that, if you come to a river crossing, now this has happened just in the last few weeks and one of the adventures, um, we had um, a, an opportunity to cross a wee stream, but the wee stream, because of some, had been some melt water, had increased in size. So the poles were invaluable for crossing the stream. Also where they come into their own is if you're on ice, because they penetrate the ice and they give you a bit more stability. So if you're going to buy poles, I would recommend you get the flick lock type, not the twist lock, the flick lock. Because if you're using them in cold weather, what happens is the flick locks, or sorry, the twist locks freeze, but the flick locks don't. So that's easy for me to say, yeah. So all these different bits and pieces form your armory, shall we say, when you're going out in the hill. Now, another thing that's, um, that we've got to think about is food, food and drink. Me personally, I always take a camelback, depending on the length of walk, I then vary the amount of water in it. For instance, if I'm going out for a two hour walk, I do not take three litres of water. I take maybe three quarters of a litre or something like that. So I, I try and judge how much water I'll need on that walk. But be aware, if you're out in winter time, you should drink more water because you've got heavier clothing on um, and the humidity, the external humidity, is a lot less than what it is in summertime, for instance. So the moisture wants to leach from your body into the atmosphere naturally. Also, because you get extra clothing on, you'll sweat more. So you need to keep yourself hydrated. Food, high energy food. Lynn Lonan will be pleased about this. You need a big piece box if you're going to want to. Um, and you want to take things that will give you a good energy boost. Um, but you also want to make sure that it's things that you really like. There's no point in taking an energy bar out that you're like, oh, I'm not really keen on that, but it's good for you. Don't do that. Take stuff that is that will give you a good, uh, a, a good hit of energy, and you like to eat it. I, I'm, I'm a great believer in oat cakes. They're my go-to snack, so I always take oat cakes rather than bread. So, hot drinks. Um, there's many, many different variations. Tea or coffee, that's, you know, a foregone. What I do is I use some cordial and um, I get obviously get the, the sugar energy off the cordial. But sometimes I put a wee bit something special in that. Not very much, just enough to flavour it. Uh, um, and there's people who have sampled that who think it's the business. So again, it's about taking something that you like so, the intention is, um, you know, to, to obviously keep going out through this uh, bad winter, providing it's not too bad. So, what I may, de, may do on the next outing is again show you a wee bit more about the Gribble Mini Spikes, but more importantly, poles and their use and the variety of uses that you can use your poles for. So, we'll, we'll wait and see how it goes, but uh, yeah. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll definitely demonstrate that next time out. Okay guys, this is uh, it's going to be a longer video than, than uh, normal, so um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get some knowledge from it. And I've, I said earlier, you know, if you want to know anything, feel free to ask me. If you want to go out, give me a shout, you know where I am. And um, yeah, it would be nice to see everybody out in the hill, even though at the moment it's only one-on-one. -on -one. So again, thanks for watching. Hope to see you all soon. And uh, yeah, the quicker we get by this COVID thing and lockdown, etc., and we can meet up in a group, it would be nice. Okay, guys, stay safe, take care, and we'll see you very, very soon. Bye.